Welcome in to the Sabine River, Orange, Texas, the home of the all-time record, attendance record, that is, for an Elite Series event of 40,107. Bassmaster fans showed up here the last time we were here in a big crowd yesterday, and a guy that has loved those crowds multiple times here at the Sabine River is our tournament leader, Brock Mosley, a five-time Elite Series bridesmaid. Kenta Kamara had to make some adjustments, but he's back in second place, and uh-oh, sitting in second place in our Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leaderboard is Kyle Welcher, and he is in third place in this tournament, and the often looked for, always talked about Keith Poche in fourth place, Hunter Shryock in fifth, a tight, tight tournament we have, and it's always that way when we come to Orange, Texas, big crowds, big opportunities, big bass, big stage, big dreams, and Davey Height, the big bass, are a relative term this time around. Definitely a relative term, but the big stage. I mean, it's absolutely incredible what the folks here at Orange, Texas do. Great stage, great crowd yesterday, and I expect to see those crowds get bigger and bigger. Puts a smile on the guy's face. And he's been out there all day and not able to catch, but about five, six, seven pounds. And when you come here and see the big crowds, it does kind of change your attitude. It's been an incredible tournament, but everybody seems a little more stressed. I mean, is that the time of the season and obviously a tough fishery? Well, I think it is. A lot of that is the time of the season, no doubt about it, Dave. But time of the season, the heat is a little thing that, you know, certainly is on a lot of people's mind, especially the anglers. I talked to several of them yesterday. The reigning world champion, Gussie, said, man, it's just too hot for me here right now. But but that makes the fishing a little tough, but but not so much. But the conditions, the high water, the, the tides are not in their favor. Snow leopards like a lot of things. Sun and, and humidity is not one of those. Snow leopards. Let's get caught up right now with our Toyota Midday Report and start off with a former Elite Series champion and a guy that seems to do really well in these wow. grinder type events, Stetson Blaylock. Absolutely. I was going to mention that, Stetson Blaylock. He's a well-rounded maybe, fisher maybe, maybe, fisherman, maybe. very diverse. He catches them deep, shallow, I mean, power like fishes. He one. finesse fishes. But one right. thing that I, I have noticed about him, that's, he's that's able to get that mental right focus now. and yeah. just understand, really hey, I don't have to go out and try to catch 20 pounds a day. I don't need to be disappointed that these fish are 12 and a half inches. I just need to catch five fish. And this morning, he was the one that really got it done early. You can see the five. sun still just coming up. That Good. Stetson Blaylock fishing a, a deeper yeah. bank in the in these cuts these and sloughs. Uh, these canals, the deeper edges is where these fish hold up a lot of time. Stetson Blaylock put a five-fish limit in the boat this morning one. in a hurry doing that. Your well, day I mean, one later, Chad Pipkins, said on stage, I caught more weight today than in my seven cumulative com competition days I I've spent on this body of water. Yeah, I was able to, get to talk to Chad yesterday <laughs> after he weighed in. He was super excited. But let's face it, he's yeah. always happy, positive kind of frame of mind, and I think that does help the anglers here like him to, to stay positive. He said, I did not have a good practice here. This year, in the years past, I've had good practices and had very bad tournaments. He said, so maybe it's all turned around for me here this week, and he certainly did it yesterday with over 14 pounds. He came close earlier this year, but once again, Hunter Shryock in the mix. Hunter Shryock currently in fifth place. Had a good day yesterday in second place. Uh, when he finished weighing his fish yesterday afternoon when all the scales were closed. Hunter having a great season, been very consistent this year. Another angler just kept a very positive frame of mind. He said, I wasn't able to catch a lot of fish like I have heard some anglers are doing in practice. You know, there were reports of, I'll just go ahead and say, Tyler Revett said he caught 100 bass one day. Wow. Given a lot of them were small. But when you hear that kind of dock talk and you're only getting five to seven bites, it can really mess with you. But Hunter was getting the right bites, had the right size, second place after yesterday. I, could, I expect to see him Saturday and Sunday. Kenta Kamira had a great day one, but changed the plan totally for day two, or did he? Well, he did He did a little bit. I noticed he turned left today, and he, he went just not far from takeoff, but he didn't stay there long. This this place was on his mind a long way north of here, up the Natchez River and off to the side, looking for that cleaner uh, water that's not as influenced by the salt water and not as influenced by the tide. Kenta Kamira really coming into his own this year on the Bassmaster Elite Series, showing us all what a great fisherman he is. We knew that coming in, and he certainly showed that in the opens, but he's been doing it on the Bassmaster Elite Series this year. And if you notice, he's throwing a big old-school spinnerbait, not finesse kind of guy. Kenta likes the power fish. From the Sandman over to Chad Pipkins. 
That's right. I said it, Davey Height, the Sandman. Mark Zona okay, anointed it. It has to happen. Sure oh, I are. didn't know that. Tell me more. Yeah. Well, let's watch Chad Pipkins right now and let the Sandman rest. Okay. Stay. Be a bass. Stay. Nice one, dude. Oh, there we go. Just was about to leave. Solid one there. Ugh. And it went swimming off. That's a keeper. Don't even have to weigh one. That's four. That's, we'll call that like the, the first three quarter fish. The other ones are like, I don't know, what do you want to call them? Like halves of fish? Halves of fish. But that's a nice one, man. Took about 17 hours. Come on with it. It's a good one, it's probably a pound and a half. Today, that's a really good one. I literally was just about to leave. I'm like, I usually catch one in that hole. And there she was to save the day. Exactly a pound and a half. That's a one four on bass track. Just so you know, I like to be four to five ounces light to keep my wife and my mom happy at home, you know? Under promise, over deliver. A great approach. That's, that's good fish, though. Let's see if we can dig good that out. Good solid fish there. For not on the clip now. Chad. Now we'll be able to find her. Not quite the start he had yesterday. He caught a good fish or two late also. Now but we're going to find you. I don't know that he expected to go out and catch 14 pounds again. If he can get Come 9 here, or 10 pounds, he'll certainly be, be where he needs to be heading Hard into Saturday. To catch once. We got her. Caught her again. There you go. Well, you gotta imagine that there's a little extra time uh, wasted in this tournament. That's color. a really short one, huh? It takes a while to catch those fish in these live wells. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but but you mentioned it this morning on takeoff dot. Cool. Every off, ounce is so so important. You really do need to yeah. take your time, Cullen, because. Issue. What separated you said stuff, you, like you quoted it up like two pounds? Like it was two so pounds between really. 50th and like 89th. Wow. Two but pounds different. You take one two pound bite. And that's that's amazing. Ugh. And that's from 50th. Yeah. You know, if you dig yeah. a little deeper to 30th, and I mean, it's an incredibly oh. tight cut. This so, week. yeah, and put it in perspective 50th place is $10,000 and maybe not the points you wanted coming in, but certainly not a bad event. You go home with a chunky one. Decent points and ten thousand dollars. Eighty ninth, not so much. Two pounds, all that separates that. I mean, if you're an eighty ninth, generally, Saturday morning. Let's be honest. I mean, you you did this for years. You're packing up your bags, getting ready to leave. I'm an eighty ninth. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Pack them up Friday night, actually. <laughs> to be honest with you. We'll take just one of your friends right now. Shoot. I was talking about them dang dogfish. I was like, don't be a dogfish. Just be a nice bass. And the other thing that stands out to me is, is you look at all these guys, and it's – and I know it's only day two. But am I reading this well, right, David? To be like – Every I'm one of them in my head, I can put a plan together too. that I could totally see Hunter so winning this. I don't want y'all to leave and then me be Prosnick. ready to go fish it right after y'all run out of here. If you idled, that'd be that'd be great. Uh, like the weirdest thing is up to our four box right now. While Stetson Blaylock figures out his exit plan and camera boats, and it's one of the things anglers have to deal with that nobody gives them credit for. I mean, they have a just shining golf. These guys have to have to plan an approach. But the crazy thing is you look at our four box, and this is no shade on Chad Pipkins. He's one of my favorite guys on tour. Hooked up again. Too. Hooked up again. Small fish. He's actually got the most difficult route to win this tournament when I look at it. You know what I mean? When you I'll just it, know their styles. And obviously he weighed in a giant yeah, yesterday, and, and you take a five, almost six-pounder off his limit. I know it, but, you know, got to make sure. We so I don't it. think, like you said, that's no 
being negative to him because everybody likes Shaq yeah. Pippen. He's such a positive guy. But even he said, right after he came off the stage, at least I know I don't even have to catch one tomorrow. Yeah. To to make a check and. So I don't I don't know that he was expecting to catch another five yeah, pounder, and I think there. he had a three, three and a half, and a five in that stringer. And trust me, there's nobody in the field that I'd be more excited to announce if on Sunday as your champion. Oh, sure. Still said that, um, and it cool very well to could happen, but it's awesome looking. You know what I mean? It's that tight of tournament that everybody you look Not at, everyone that comes on camera, that, you're like, I could see that. them winning this on Sunday. Yeah. The one thing talked with him yesterday afternoon though that that I was impressed with. He said, I've learned from being here in the past, I don't need to run around so much. Yeah. That he felt like a, a big reason for him catching what he caught yesterday is because he settled down and he fished thoroughly through the areas that he had confidence in. He said, in the past, I've actually had some good practices here, and, and I'd start off slow in the tournament and then just run around too much and spend, spend too much time without a, a bait and a hook in the water. Stetson took his win at Winya Bay. And Hunter's been close, and obviously Prosnick a four-time winner. Not only is Prosnick a four-time winner, he he's fished a lot of tidal water. Yeah. You know, this, this is right up his alley. Blaylock cooked up. No. I'm not even, I don't even know how, he's probably too close to 12 inches anyway. I mean, I'm this morning when he's getting all excited about those ones. Yeah, I really ain't going to sit and fight with one unless it's, you know, 13 inches or so. I feel like Stetson, as great a career as he has had, you know, at FLW and here, I feel like he's one of those guys that's going to have a breakout. You know what I mean? He's getting – he came close in the Classic. He's been in Angler. But I just feel like he's going to get a stretch where he wins multiple you, you events. I promise you, make it any slower than it is. I agree with you. I thought he had the Classic one when Jason Christie won it like Hartwell. That fish he caught right at the very end, I thought it gave him enough. Obviously, it wasn't. He finished you ever third, tell, didn't he? Wasn't he third? Yep. You ever tell Jason Christie that? No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> but I think Jason kind of would like it if he was able to break somebody's heart right at the end that thought they had it. <laughs> George Cochran is a good friend of mine, and I'm sure he loved the fact that he broke my heart one time. And, and it hasn't <laughs> scarred you at all. We hear about it every, every single week, Dave. Right. This is therapy. I mean, it. we may be working this maybe bass line. You think I forgot about it? <laughs> not one bit. Not one bit. I mean, Ray Scott just let go of your hand. But when you tell the story, it sounds like Ray Scott took your hand and threw it to the ground. With a sledgehammer and hit it. Get off my stage. <laughs> I think there's no more wasps up there. Kind of been bad. And back to Chad. Uh, this does kind of set up, though. You see these finesse, you know, slow down, lighter line kind of deal to get these smaller fish to bite. You hang, but I'd, just, I'd be jumping in, and then you'd be left in the boat, and I would say sorry is all. <laughs> That's how it would have went down. So I apologize. You could set your camera down. One of those, I think I'd be fine and just take EpiPen and go to the hospital. Two or three of them get me. Eh. I don't know. I haven't been, haven't been stung since. Doctor told me it could be a lot worse. It could be the same. I'd like to not find out. And then Nora would, my wife, who's, she's watching. It would be about like Paul Mueller winning, winning at St. John's at Palatka. Oh, a little one. It'd be unexpected, but I could see it possible. What's that? Paul Mueller winning, winning at St. John's River, flipping grass, because he's such an electronics offshore kind of guy, was a little surprising to me. 
for Chad to win here. It would be surprising, not necessarily what you would expect him to get his first blue trophy doing, but I could still see it happening. Especially with his track record here. Yes. You know, I think he said, I heard him say earlier today, I, he believes statistically, and, and, and we'd have to check him with the stat rat back at the home office on this, but statistically he believes he's the worst record of an Elite Series pro here in Orange. Oh, really? He said, I mean, he was reading them out. He's like 100th, 89th. They were all... Never made a cut here. I didn't here. realize that. Like I didn't realize that. The next tournament, St. Clair, you're like, well, that we're in Pipkins, but it just yeah. how often it you hear anglers say that, and I mean, I'm sure you had that situation where it's oh yeah, it's never the one you circle in the calendar. Yep. That's tournament fishing. I, I'm sure you fishing tournaments coming up. You'd have those like local tournaments. You'd have. Certain anglers that would only show up if they were really catching them at practice, like they were off on a Friday and were able to go pre-fish, and you saw them at takeoff. They were actually in the tournament. They caught them the day before, and <laughs> you can't you can't be successful like that because so many times when you win is not when you caught them the day before or when you caught them in practice. What was the most shocking win of your career? Like the day before the tournament, you thought it was going to suck, and you won it. Um. Probably Red River, uh, Shreveport. I I just won at St. Clair the tournament before, and I I was not on them in practice, and it just kind of all just fell in my lap. It really did. Wow, multiples, two in a row, incredible. Well, we've had two winners this year that are Elite Series rookies. I mean, what a group of winners we've had, and there is nobody. That the bass fishing world, I mean, there's a lot of people where we've got a lot of people cheering for, but there's nobody cheering against Brock Mosley. I mean, a five-time Elite Series bridesmaid. He's leading this tournament right now, but you got to watch out for the Sandman. Kenta Kamira right behind him. He steals your dreams, Davey Height. I need to hear more about the Sandman. He's a stealer of dreams. The dreams disappear, and Kenta takes them home. We'll be right back from the Folds of Honor, Bassmaster Elite.